Hey, Chris here from Switch Weekly, and today I am joined by Jay from Game and Word, who um, actually, I think I should just let you introduce yourself and tell people who you are and what you're about and what you're doing. Yes, yeah, so, so certainly. Uh, thanks for having me on, Chris. Nice. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, my name's uh, Jay, and I publish Game and Word, uh, which is uh, a weekly newsletter on the intersection of video games with the arts, sciences, and humanities. I uh, publish at least once a week. There's uh, free and uh, paid content. And if you appreciate just really, really deep dives into aspects of gaming that you might not have thought about before, uh, check me out. And uh, we'll, I'm sure Chris will include a link in the, in the notes. Yeah, there'll be a link in the description. Um, how long have you been going now? Uh, since, since New Year's of uh, this okay. year. So we're cool. uh, we're we're fledging we're f we're fledging publication. Okay. So and yeah. Also, it, that a long time long time reader of Switch Weekly too, and okay. member of yeah. the Discord and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we're here today to talk about um, Earthbound. Um, we on the Switch Weekly Discord, we kind of occasionally have like a games club, and a few months back we played um, Earthbound as our monthly game. So I thought it'd be kind of neat to get Jay on because he is like a massive self-confessed like Earthbound fan. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. um, and so I, yeah, I think that might be <laughs> that might be putting it a little lightly. But yes. yeah, okay, I'm <laughs> underselling it, but yeah, um, I, I figured it'd be interesting to get you on to talk about Earthbound because it's one of those games that. It's kind of a weird one, isn't it, in terms of like Nintendo's relationship with it? Because, I mean, from my perspective, at least, I, I knew very little about it. I didn't really know of it. Um, I guess kind of pre-internet, I, I didn't really, I wasn't really familiar with with, with Earthbound. And and it was always one of these games that I'd never played because of its kind of limited availability. So when it came to the Switch, finally, um, it seemed like an apt thing to kind of jump in and check out and see what the fuss was all all about. So I was pretty ignorant to what it was and what it was all about really um it was kind of a bit of a black spot in my nintendo history um so I, I guess it might be useful to kind of kick things off by if you could just kind of give us a kind of the history of the kind of series in a nutshell i guess mm -hmm. yeah sure so um so earthbound is um so that is the the localized name for um mm. for the, uh, the the original japanese game which is mother 2 uh, which, as the name implies, is the second game in the Mother Trilogy. And the Mother Trilogy is the brainchild of Shigesato Itoi, mm. who, if, you know, if look this man up, uh, he's, he's a madman and a genius <laughs> in equal measure. Right. He's done everything from, you know, voice acting, uh, copywriting, uh, uh, like uh, he's a world, monopoly world champion. He's uh, really buried. He's, yeah, he's like buried for like hunted for buried gold. He's wow. like when you think of like a like a polymath or a Renaissance man. I mean, like like that's. I mean, he is like ar archetypal. Yeah, he's got the so modern version of that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so he's uh, so he's a pretty big name in Japan, right? Mm. So when he decided. Well, almost on a whim, you know, that he wanted to make a video game. Uh, of course, you know, that was, a, that was a big deal. So, so the Mother series has always been very popular in Japan. Right. Now. Um, See, I never, I never realized he kind game. of had this, I never realized he had this kind of cultural cachet beyond video games. I didn't know it at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Huh. And it's not, yeah, it's something that, you know, you, why would you know, right? Unless mm. you're, you know, unless you're either in Japan or you're, you know, you're oh, yeah. like unhealthily obsessed with the franchise <laughs> like I am. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. And and so Nintendo, like uh, you know, to their credit, you know, they you know, they knew that, okay, you know, we should at least try to, you know, to to, to bring this over to, to, to the West, right? Right. Um, but they also knew that it was gonna be kind of a hard sell, right? Mm. Um and actually they had did actually fully localized a uh, mother one which is now known as earthbound beginnings um, sure. and it was all ready to go right but it was like it was literally like the, the tail end of the nes's life cycle and so they decided to cancel that you know just to focus right. more on the on the snes right sure so of course like every you know like every big nes uh hit uh nintendo you know took uh the mother they took mother and made it super 
right? Yeah. It's like they did, you know, with a Super Mario and a Super uh, Metroid and mm. Super Link to the Past. And, sure. Yeah. So they, it's like they gave it. So they gave it the, the super treatment. Right? Yeah, turned everything up to eleven. And, yeah. So, uh, so, so that became time to to localize um, and market uh, Mother Two, which mm. they then just called Earthbound um, because you know that was they had the name, they had the name already, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, so they start doing it, and they you know, and they realize, okay, you know, this is going to be kind of a tough sell because uh, first of all, JRPGs in general uh, weren't. Uh, weren't really yeah. that popular in the West at the time. You know, this was before Final Fantasy VII, and, kind of broke through, and right? Big run. Yeah, so it's a uh, so it's a kind of a kind of a niche genre to begin with. Then also, uh, it had a very kind of simple graphic style. And this at a time where, you know, in the mid nineties. Yeah, as I say, it was ninety five, oh, right? When it came to the US. Yep, ninety five. Right. Yeah. So this the time you know where it's like, oh, you know, graphics, you know, ooh, shiny graphics, good game. Yeah, I mean, you're you're already pretty late, aren't you, in the uh, SNES life cycle at that point? So, mm. mm-hmm. yeah, and um, so yeah, and then the marketing campaign, you know, is now this I do know I, I, a I little bit I, about. Yeah, it's a bit of a yeah, disaster, game, right? Yeah, th- this game stinks. Is that was the mm. tagline? <laughs> and I mean, it's brave. Like, yep, yeah, and. And I, I understand the logic behind it. Um, they're mm. trying to, you know, latch onto the whole kind of like, you know, the uh, like the Nickelodeon slime, like Earthworm Jim, you know, kind of like the kind of like gross out stuff that was. Yeah, it's, you know, very, it's very you off know, the time. Was, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so they tried, you know, but it, it, they, it just didn't land. You know, no. it happens. But uh, but as a result, uh, Earthbound was um, a critical and a commercial bomb. Right. in america which meant that it never got localized it never got localized for europe first of all no and and then later on uh when mother three came out uh, of course in japan it was like like a huge deal and you know mm. and everyone loved it and all that but you know when as far as bringing it to to the west at all is just radio silence uh, right and still see, radio see, silence from nintendo <laughs> yeah pretty much now i i knew it was like a commercial failure in the u.s when it launched in 95 but i wasn't really aware of the kind of critical response to it you said it didn't go down well mm-hmm. yeah yeah because uh because yeah all the critics were basically like oh you know like uh, oh this, this has nes graphics right you would, uh hype you hyper realistic blood and, and action and explosions yeah and, I mean, when you compare it to the likes of Donkey Kong Country, which came out in a similar sort of time frame, I can see that argument, yeah. but it's it's beyond, it's yeah. seeing it beyond for what it is, isn't it? It's more than the sum of its parts sort yes. of thing. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, this is kind of comes around to then, doesn't it? The whole kind of Mother 3 thing. And the, the that was a GBA game, if I'm correct, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And the whole kind of yeah. thing about bringing that to the West. And that seems to have just completely he obviously he's no longer with nintendo but that seems to completely have kind of followed reggie fils during his career at nintendo as one of those kind of things that they wouldn't shut up about in terms of fan requests right come on reggie give us mother three how about this instead yes oh yes and it was a uh, oh yeah but the, the memes and every oh it was so good and and you know if, if I, I follow reggie on twitter now you know sure. that he's uh you know retired and you know he's he, He's, he's a pretty good sport about it. Like mm. he'll, you know, he'll joke about it now. And, uh, you know, so it's funny. I, I think he kind of, I, I think, you know, Reggie, you know, I think he felt, he felt for the fan base, certainly. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, Mother 3 is a tricky one to localize, not just because, mm. you know, of kind of like the risk that, you know, you're asking Nintendo to take, but also there's a lot of like things as far as content that, right. Or you know that that are very uh, culture specific, you know that fire in Japan, but would be yeah. actually be pretty problematic in the West. Yeah, and I which you wouldn't be like, able to really patch over. Like translation is one thing, but it's more the localization that's the issue with Mother Three, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, I I haven't read, I haven't got my copy yet of, of Reggie's um, Reggie's book that's just recently come out. But I'm curious to see if you'll touch upon the whole kind of Mother Three thing mm-hmm. in that book. Cause, cause yeah. I'm I'm waiting for it, <laughs> waiting for um, it to come up. So yeah, um, that kind of I guess 
rounds out the series in terms of uh, of its history at least when when did it when did it start on the on the nes do you know do you know what year that was that was sorry but i think 89 okay um right so it's, it, it's been a while around a while then um and in terms of um the toy and his do, do, do you know kind of much about the development of it in terms of was he given quite free reign with it mm-hmm. it seems like he was maybe yeah yeah totally he um and that, so he that, was, that, that, that in was itself awesome. feels unusual for Nintendo. Oh, to absolutely. Kind of a, to kind of have an outsider and, come in and, and just kind of be like, yeah, you know, you crack on sort of thing. It seems a bit... Yeah, yeah, no. And, mm. I, and I think, you know, like if it was anybody else, like mm. I don't think Nintendo would have gone with it. But no. um, but but it but it's always sound is such a genius and, you know, and such a big name in Japan, you know, that they... Uh, you know, that they thought, okay, well, you know, if, if, if this guy's doing it, then... It's, then it's going to be good. I think the only kind of parallel I could draw there was was was, was probably Star Fox. So obviously, they they worked with Argonaut Studios in the UK um, on on the development of that, and that seems to be another series that Nintendo don't seem to hold a lot of love for internally. I mean, they don't really know what to do with it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it's probably a weak link and a weak comparison, but it, there is some some sort of link there mm-hmm. in terms of kind of how they they kind of hold it in their regard, at least internally. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, so moving on to... Oh, um... also, a bit of trivia, too. Um, yeah, another sure, one of it. the... And I forget, I I, 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 sort of, I should turn in my fan card because I don't know I don't know this, but uh, but I, I don't know what he's credited as, but another uh, uh, big name that worked on, on the Mother series uh, was uh, none other than Satoru Iwata himself. Right, okay. Huh. Yeah, yeah, that's... That's a pretty big name to have. Yeah, to and and, and him that. and and him and and Itoi became really close friends from right. you know being in the trenches, like working mm-hmm. on on the game. Yeah. Hmm. Um. What, just before we get onto the actual game itself, what does Itoi do now in terms of is he does he work in any kind of creative space still, or is he is he retired, or do you know? Yeah, I think he's kind of. Uh, I think he lives a life of. <laughs> Yeah, kind of like just wealthy eccentricity. Of, sure. You know, basically, basically, kind of does what he feels like doing at any given moment. <laughs> Sounds yeah. Okay, so and, living the li- living the life. Okay. Yeah. Living the life, absolutely. He's on Twitter too, and he tweets in Japanese, but I read the translations, and you know, sure. and, and it's it's very poetic, and then absolutely what you would <laughs> I do what you would expect from him when the game launched on the Switch online service, mm-hmm. I do remember seeing a few tweets of him, yes. of his actually, and he did seem ecstatic that it was actually, you know, reaching this wider yeah. audience. So that yes. was nice to see. So yeah, getting back to um, the game itself. Uh, let's have a look here. Um, so on the Switch, it launched, I don't know, was it like February, I think it was. Um, and I, like I said, I went into it knowing literally nothing about the, the game other than that it was about like aliens crash landing and a, a group of friends um, doing something about it. My exposure to the series prior to this was just, oh, who's that little boy in Smash Bros, you know? Um, in Smash, back, yep. back, back in, in, in Melee, and I assume that's the case for a lot of people, you know? Um, yes. So yeah, went in blind, um, kind of G'd up by your enthusiasm for it, to be honest. And <laughs> I could kind of immediately Ooh. see why it had um appeal especially like uh, when, when, when did when how old were you when you first played the game i was so let's see i was about maybe 10 years old maybe yeah yeah it's about so, 10 so, years old yeah so i i kind of get that instant resonance with it because you're playing a little boy going on an adventure and the way it's written um it's not juvenile is it but it, it's kind of written in a way that will resonate with people of, of that age i guess is that would you say that's yeah, fair to say I, yeah oh absolutely yeah. and yeah I, I i know exactly what you're what, what you're getting out. at it's mm-hmm. uh it's very um uh, yeah like you know i think uh, you, you, you kind of want to say childlike but that you know kind of that's you don't too, I feel too it. negative yeah. of a connotation you know sure it's more like childlike but in a good way in the sense that you know like a, of, a, of how a child sees the world you know yeah, it's got as like far that as you know it's whimsy about it and yeah kind of tongue-in-cheekness and I don't know, yeah. uh, the kind of general and, kind of sense, earnest, sense of something bigger behind you, yeah. Yeah, and, and a real kind of earnest sense that, you know, uh, just belief that, you know, that in the, in the end, you know, uh, in the struggle between good and evil, good will win out. Um, Eventually, And very yeah. earnest, you know, and, and even in Mother 3, which is a, a very, 
very heavy, dark and bleak game. Right. Even there, you know, that that kind of it's fundamentally a very optimistic game, you know, because it's basically says, you know, like it, you know, we have faith in humanity to ultimately right. do the right thing, you know. So so that's is, kind of like a, a through line yeah. with the series, isn't it? In that despite yes. whatever mm-hmm. the kind of overarching pressures are, there is there is hope throughout of it. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Yes. So, yeah, my first kind of hour or two with the game, I, I kind of found it really quite difficult, actually. Um, mm-hmm. Just from the sense of, like, I think a, a lot of things now are kind of hand-holdy and, and, and kind of gentle introductions, but this is just like, here you are, off you go. And that's fine. I have no problem with that and getting to, get to grips with things. I think it was just the fact that I kept getting my ass kicked, you know? Um, mm-hmm. In the first hour or two, I, I, I didn't really realize that I needed to level up a bit and have a bit more patience. And I was just trying to rush through to find what I needed to do. Right. Um, and once I kind of took a step back and just took my time to kind of talk to the NPCs and kind of drink in a bit of the world, if that makes sense, um, mm-hmm. I found it a yeah. bit more rewarding. Um, I, the approach I took was probably not the right one, but yeah, I found the first couple of hours really frustrating in terms of having to level up and grind a bit. Um, mm-hmm. But that was just that kind of initial oh I'm, I'm enthusiastic to kind of get somewhere yeah. and get some progress done you know mm-hmm. yeah absolutely yeah. and for sure i think uh you know I, I would say uh i would say the game's like weakest element is probably is, is its combat and it's uh right. it's combat mechanics it, it does like introduce some really like cool innovations to right. like jrpg turn-based combat like the rolling kid point meter and all that but uh yeah, especially at first when you're alone, right? Before you have like you know your the, before you build out you know the rest of your party, and sure. before you learn like you know like really good side uh, moves. Um, yeah. yeah, combat's a, combat can be a bit of a can be a bit of a drag. Certainly, yeah, it felt like a bit of a slog um, until I got some of the like the PK moves and stuff like that. Yes, yes, exactly. But uh, but um, yeah, once you once you get stronger, then it becomes it becomes much more fun, and mm. and especially kind of in the late game, the game like really ingeniously like uses the the combat mechanics, uh, you know, for to deliver like kind of like narrative, um, you know, to deliver n- narrative or thematic uh, information to the player, right. Um, <laughs> paying attention to it and it's hard to and i yeah and i'm trying to like figure out a way to so without spoiling it but um i don't know yeah you know, i'm not i'm not overly get worried there, about spoilers yeah. but yeah. i mean it's, it's a game that's like 25 or 30 years old or whatever it is um so I, you know I, I can't blame you for, for spoiling True. it but um yeah. yeah um and it was just a sense of mystery when you first got up to the the kind of a, is it asteroid or whatever it was the kind of crash land the crash oh, yes. site at the beginning mm-hmm. um it had a real yeah. kind of like mystery about it uh, just the, the for what like you said the kind of it's kind of primitive nes graphics or nes graphics um i think it actually gave a sense of like scene quite well you know with that the dark lighting mm-hmm. and like the police cars around yeah. and, like, ticket tape and whatnot i thought it was actually quite quite effective in like setting the scene up for what was like this well what is this i need to know more you know um yeah I yeah it was, it did quite a good job with kind of with the opening in terms of its kind of narrative sense at least mm-hmm yeah, absolutely. I think I, I think Earthbound the whole game could be like a like a masterclass in narrative design, um, right. because of just the way that 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 Itoy and that Itoy and his team uh, really like uh, really leverage the just the the unique properties of gaming just as a medium to mm. to tell to tell the story. You know, it's a it's it is a story that could only be told in a video game. Yeah, I think on that. Uh the kind of parallel there is is kind of going back to what you were saying earlier in terms of how it's written in terms of the kind of childlike wonder about it but you go from this kind of serious scene where you you know you're at this crash site and you're wondering what the hell's going on and then you're you're back home and then your your mother's like oh have have something to eat and then off you go you know it's it's kind of weirdly um serious in its tone in in one sense and then Mm -hmm. really playful and you know kind of thematic in in, in, in others and i kind of found that quite fun um how your mum's just like, yeah, you know, you just go off and I, I don't know what she thinks you're doing. Save the world. It, yeah, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> at some point it's like go save the world, and then in others it's like you're just going out to yeah. play, right? It just feels like you, you're just right. being kids. Off you go. Um, it's like yeah, it's like okay, sure, change the world, you know, but but save the world, just change out of your jammies before you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It felt just yeah. like a mum going, okay, sure, you go do what you're doing, have yeah. fun, don't you know, be safe, safe, and all that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. So that that was kind of cute. Um, and then, like, so, I mean, obviously, beyond that, I, I kind of um, was going around the level, the, the world, sorry, on a, 
and some of the sprites haven't aged well um i mean some of them just look comical and that's that's just trying to have yeah. you know sprites from different angles and it, they're not looking great um i'm not here to dunk on it honestly but then some of them um i, I think i brought this up to you maybe and maybe it's just like a cultural thing but some of them looked a bit blackface kind of gollywog some of the sprites and um, maybe you only people yeah, in the uk it... will know what that reference is but it was a bit kind of like oh it took me back a bit yeah, it's 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 funny because yeah, like I like it's maybe it maybe it was also this that I'd grown up with this game and you know and so I you know I see I first saw those sprites as a kid, right? You know, not yeah, having you, you know you see it for what it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. right? You know, so that um but so yeah, so I feel that's that's something, you know, like like that uh you know, it's part of the the perspective that a that a newcomer can bring, you know, exactly. is kind of point, yeah. hey, wait, like, what's this? It's like, oh, wait, that is kind of weird. How did I not yeah. notice that? Right. <laughs> but I mean, that's yeah. that's tr that's true of all media. I mean, things age well, yeah. and, and some others that that have another view. I mean, I, I went to see um, "You Only Live Twice" at the cinema, the Bond film, uh, last oh, week. Oh, nice. Um, and that's got some horrendous like misogyny and sexism and racist scenes in it um so yeah it's one of those things you have to take with a kind of broad stroke and you know all media yep. has, has has its moments um yep but, but that kind of goes to kind of another thing about the, that i found with earthbound is kind of its um its social commentary uh which i was quite surprised by to be honest um for what is a game about four kids going on an adventure quite quickly it was like there was um scenes of like essentially like police, police brutality put into my face i was quite surprised <laughs> yep. by that you know um oh yeah and uh, playing that in 2022 considering the last few years we've had kind of it seemed kind of oddly pretty impressive you know it's odd yeah yeah absolutely and um oh yeah and that's like that's just the beginning you know like there's a it's only they're very clearly you know, did, like did his homework as far as, you mm -hmm. know, like, uh, you know, like figuring out, you know, like, what, okay, what are some like kind of distinctly Western um, kind of problems, right? You know, sure. like any, you know, so, so you're, uh, you're in Tucson, you're in Tucson right now. Uh, very soon you're going to uh, go up against this weird, like secretive cult and yeah. like a, in a rural backwater. Uh, then there's, you know, themes of, uh, like political corruption mm. then um and then also then the, the later on to the game you get then you get into more kind of abstract and philosophical right uh kind of questions as well like around like you know like good yeah like the nature of good and evil sure. um like uh what like the nature of courage uh the right. like and especially and especially like the last like two hours or so like like it's it's just art it's dripping with symbolism right okay and, yeah. um and those, a lot to I unpack mean, yeah i bet um for those who don't know what i was referring to i mean it's, it's it's very early in the game so it's not particularly a major spoiler but yeah um basically the, the main character goes up against like five different police officers who want to mm -hmm beat you up all at once sort of thing and they're quite brazen about the fact that they're going to beat up a kid um so that's what i was referring to so to see those themes kind of continue and, and grow throughout is it, interesting to hear um i mean it, it kind of comes back to how it's written but as a kid do you think they kind of went over your head or did they make you kind of question things mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm curious like if it resonated yeah yeah so 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 as a kid um what i loved was um kind of like the sense of adventure that mm. that i felt kind of played through because because the the world of earthbound feels like um huge like enormous right i mean it is pretty big but it's not like crazy it's not like hyrule and breath of the wild crazy no you know but just like the the level design is so like tight you know like it really does like it makes the world feel really big and expansive so no, it does. as you move from locale to locale to locale like it really feels like you're on this world traveling adventure and mm. as a kid of course you know that was a lot of fun and yeah then getting to, and then getting to the end and the final boss and you know having my 10 year old brain melt <laughs> <laughs> also also stuck with me for for a very long that's you know so to this day right and then replaying it uh, that's kind where of more grown i imagine up, you know 
Yeah, then I start noticing kind of like, oh, you know, like like the, the dialogue is really like witty and sublime and everything. And then even playing it, replaying it again and again and again, I always notice like new like layers or right. like connect to put dots together that I hadn't before. Like I find out some new, some line of dialogue I hadn't seen. Like like even like or twenty years later. Light. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it never many... it never gets old. It's like a fine wine. <laughs> How many times do you think you've, you've played through it? Oh boy, uh, geez, I lost, uh, this is probably like Super, Super Mario sixty four, which I played through like a dozen times or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I, I would say yeah, about it, yeah, about ten, ten to twelve, give right. or, you know, give or take a uh, like one or two playthroughs. But yeah, yeah, I play so, it like on average every two years at least. Yeah, okay, right. Um, so yeah, I mean, going back to your kind of sense, your, your point about the, the world seeming seeming quite large um i've only like visited the first two three areas i think so mm -hmm. but even then i mean I, I get i get what you're saying and it's it's the way it's kind of crafted isn't it because it has these kind of big like roads in between each place which give you that sense of journey and then when you get to this place it's really rich in terms of like you know there's the places you can go i, I just one in particular that i thought was pretty cool was the the the, the, the there's that place where that band's playing in in tucson oh yes uh, yeah, and the, the chaos theater yeah and it's just like you know most games you, you get like a shop and a hospital maybe and uh, that would be the, mm -hmm. the rest of it but here you've got a theater you've got a supermarket you've got a hotel you've got a post office you've got a police station it just seems really really rich and, and, and well realized mm -hmm. so um yeah i just kind of appreciated it on that level in terms of what it was trying to do in terms of the world building i thought it was it was, it was quite an achievement yeah so uh, and that and uh and also just and also just the localization uh was i mean like that that team uh that that was like that i cannot imagine how you know how much <laughs> work that was yeah you know for such a text heavy game and so much like you know like culture specific stuff to navigate and and they were you know they were on a rush you know they're on a tight schedule so yeah uh, i think they had only a year to localize it uh and they did such a good job with it it was like it was just such a care and attention to detail like for the localization that was very not even unusual i'd say unique for that mm. era well yeah definitely and just thinking of that I'd, I'd love to have seen like um a european localization of that and just to see how how, how it might have differed but then again on saying that because i know these things do happen like um you, there's a lot of localization differences in some instances at least between like american and, and the and, and european releases on, on certain games mm -hmm. um even with like nintendo stuff like pokemon and things like that um but yeah. then again i i kind of taught myself out of it now actually because i think st sticking with the american localization only lends itself more to kind of like the americana that the game itself is kind of trying mm -hmm. to get across yes. i think so mm -hmm. i think yeah yeah leave, leave it bit, leave it be um, <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, in terms of like my playthrough, like I say, I only got to like just outside of Tucson. Um, so a very early game, I imagine. You tell me. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Oh yes. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I'm like what three, four hours in, I think I am. Um, oh yeah, it's definitely early uh, game. How 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 long? How, what's yeah. a typical playthrough for you in terms of hours? I mean, I guess so... you can like speed run it now, right? <laughs> I probably could, but um. I yeah, no, something in me like won't let me speed run it. Like yeah. I just have to talk to everyone. I, I you know, I just enjoy soaking in the world so well, much. Like, I, I actually like, probably like you play. Said, it's a fine wine. You don't want to down a bottle of wine. Do you? It's not advisable. Ex yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah so I mean, yeah. I I probably finish it in about like uh, maybe twenty to twenty five hours. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, I've got I'm I'm yeah. way out. Um, I I've just got to the bit where there's like a pencil and like a statue in the ground. Oh the so. yeah. Oh yes. Yes. Okay, so I'm really, have, I'm really uh, have early. You spoken, have, you, have you spoken to Apple Kid yet? Um, I think I spoke to both of them. I don't know how that okay, went. Okay, all right. I think I ended up spend, getting the money out of the ATM and, and, and okay, spending all right. money with both okay, of them. Okay, so, 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 so you're good. All yeah. right, you're good. All right. So um, that kind of concludes my kind of experience with it because like I, said, I didn't do very far, but I, I wanted to get you on because I wanted to speak to you to kind of get your sense of like the broader story and, and what, what I've got mm -hmm. in store for me and make sure like I can get through it and then maybe come back and do another, yes. another, another chat where I can actually yep. speak about it in full. 
Um, mm-hmm. I just thought it'd be interesting yeah. to kind of see your kind of perspective on it and what your issue yeah. with the series is. So people can kind of, uh, you know, you're, you're here to basically sell people on playing this game, I think, because, mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah it's, it's on Switch Online. And I don't know, uh, it's one of those mm-hmm. things, isn't it, Switch Online? Um, I don't know about yep. you, but a lot of these games come out and then I'll play them for like an hour and be like, okay, I get the idea. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've got my, I've got my yeah. kind of retro fill, but this is one of those games that I think deserves a bit more of a, a bit more of a look because it's yes. like you say it didn't yeah. sell very well it's had limited availability over the past 20 odd years and now we've got it it's like okay look at this bit in nintendo history yeah yeah totally and yeah absolutely uh whatever you know whatever you're ready to have me out again let me know um mm-hmm. yeah take take your time with it it is um yeah. you know yeah it's, it's a game that uh that demands uh I don't know what the word is, but like, you know, just, it's pretty, yeah, just so you just slow down a bit, right? Yeah, and just yeah. kind, of, kind of stop and smell the, the digital roses. Uh, yeah. Um, I would say as far as what you have in store for you, uh, go ahead. Or, um, I was just going to say the um, the strategy guide is available online. Nintendo made that available as well when, mm-hmm. the, um, yes. when the game came out. So um, that's been helpful. Very helpful, yes. And um, and there are a few really good fan made ones uh, too. Right. Um, if you have a like, I have, what's the one I? So this playthrough, oh, here we go. Here we go. I used this playthrough. I used uh, this one, which I got from a fan gamer. Um, oh, that's and beautifully it's done. Basically, there, isn't it? yeah, it's it's basically like written like as a travel guide, right? You know, so right. so very fitting with the whole kind of theme of exploring the world and traveling the world. And sure, yeah. It was a real. It was it was really fun to play through with this as a companion. Uh, it added a nice kind of extra layer to it. Um, yeah, I'm looking yeah, forward to, to, it, to as far as uh, digging into it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, and yeah, as far as what you got in store for you, uh, just uh, a lot of laughs. Uh, well, the kind of like the main theme, like the end credits theme, is called "Smiles and Tears." Right. I think that kind of sums it up. Yeah. Um, it'll it'll take you through the, the full gamut of human emotion. Um, sometimes uh right, you know, <laughs> from one to the other without missing a beat and then right. back again. Um the last uh like the ending that whole ending sequence uh is like nothing else in gaming. Um absolutely, I mean like uh you know, it's, uh, it's fine, you know, uh, to spoil everything else in the game, but I say like that's one like the that's Hold one part like the the ending the the final boss and the and the end in the end game like the brief end game is sure. one one thing that I would absolutely like 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 be, be take care to avoid any spoilers for because it sure. is like it, it is it is literally I know I I know this sounds like like a, like like a like fanboy exaggeration but it is it, it is a life changing experience right. like and for the better like I mean it's uh it, it'll it'll stay with you for right. a while and then you know. And then, but then having the build up to, you know, having had like the whole build up before then, right, uh, will just kind of magnifies that impact versus right. if you like just kind of watch it on a let's play or something. Sure. So, uh, so yeah, I'll keep it uh, safe. Take your time and yeah. yeah, keep yeah, take your time, enjoy it, and uh, and yeah, it's uh, it'll it'll be worth it. Great, I'm looking forward to it. Um, yeah. Okay. So, well, yeah. Thanks for uh, taking the time out to talk to us about um, Earthbound and running through your thoughts yeah, on it. Thanks for having me. No worries. Um, do you want to just tell people again where they can find your find your work? Mm-hmm. Yeah, certainly. So, uh, so you could uh, subscribe to Game and Word at uh, gameandword.substack.com. I am also on Twitter. That's at Game and Word. And uh, if you want to email me, it's uh, gameandword at gmail.com. And uh, I'm also on Discord on the Switch Weekly uh, server, uh, where I'm pretty active uh, Mm -hmm. under the handle Pirate Spokesman. Uh, So, yeah, Uh, reach out at any time. Always happy to talk games. Always happy to talk Earthbound particularly. And, uh, yeah, subscribe. Great. Uh, Thanks again, um, Jay. And uh, like I said, we're on the Switch Weekly Discord discussing this game. I'll put a link in the description if you wanted to join. and. Again, if you're not a subscriber to Switch Weekly, that's over at switchweekly.com. Uh, it's my weekly Nintendo roundup of all things Switch. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.